So we've reached our last stop on our interpretive walk here at Camp Bayou. Um, the obvious focal point of this spot is, of course, a large live oak. Uh, called a live oak because it keeps its green leaves through the wintertime when most other trees drop their leaves. <coughs> and you'll see, as you can hear, there's um, lots of different wildlife going on here. I, I think it's great that every time you walk by this tree, it's, it's kind of awe-inspiring, and people say it's a really beautiful tree. And it's too bad that this tree can't understand what we're saying, because, as we all know, it doesn't speak English. It's Spanish, right? <laughs> this tree is actually, I'm sorry, it's a bad joke, but this tree is actually estimated to be at least 200 years old. So that means this tree was probably here whenever Florida still belonged to Spain, before it was even an acquisition of the United States. So, yeah, it speaks Spanish or maybe some Native American tongue, probably more likely. Um, actually, the term hammock, which most a lot of the hammocks we see around here are live oak hammocks. The term hammock is thought to be a Native American term that means shady place. And as you can see, this would actually be a good place to, to catch some shade. And it's interesting that in the summertime, a hammock will actually be several degrees cooler than the surrounding area because the oak holds in moisture. And on the flip side of that, in the wintertime, the oak can actually protect the plants that are amongst it because it retains the humidity. So that can prevent plants from freezing and also keep the plants out of freezing winds. <clears throat> we look at this as kind of a, uh, a beautiful thing to see now, but as we heard earlier, it was also an important resource. It was also very important in the 1800s as a shipbuilding material because the wood is actually waterproof. And the animals, of course, as we heard, they, they use the acorns. And you'll notice that there's lots of different life forms actually living on this tree. We have resurrection fern, which is very interesting to see up through here. And right now it's actually in a dormant stage, but whenever that resurrection fern gets some water, it'll actually pop back to its green form, um, not instantaneously, of course, but it will actually come back to a shiny green plant form. One of the interesting areas we have over here, which you guys may not be able to see from your vantage point, we have butterfly orchid which is, interestingly, it's the most common orchid in Florida, but it's still a protected species, so of course you cannot collect it. <clears throat> we have lots of Spanish moss, which you guys have learned can be a little snack. If you're hungry, you can grab a little bit off the tree. We even have what I believe is a stable palm growing here in the center of the oak, which I've never seen before. But again, a very old tree, and I think it's important that we see all the different life forms that live around this small canopy. But then, as this is our last stop on our interpretive trip, um, it's important to realize that this is a small area of life, but we have a very different area of life in the Pine Flatwoods. And all these things are very important because, although they're separate, they tie in together as the uplands that we know. And it's very important to keep those areas diverse, otherwise one will bleed into the other and kind of take over the area. So as we take these classes, I think it's, it's really important that we keep that in mind, we're knowledgeable about it, and we can help preserve those unique ecosystems.